Should I start my StarCraft 2 cast completely zoomed in on one of the two players? I mean, I've always been a fan of this view. It looks really pretty. It's just that it's not particularly convenient later on into the game, but... I mean, it's nice to see those space construction vehicles up close and personal. We can always give them names. Anyways, so spawning today in the top left hand corner of Lightshade LE. Playing with the blue Terran SCVs from France. We're looking at none other than Clem's main command center. His opponent already sending out a worker to watch what seems to be the other side of the map. A fellow Frenchman. We have none other than Marine Lord. Alrighty, so Marine Lord... With the Supply Depot finishing up on the top of his ramp, I guess he's planning on proxying a barracks, indeed, on the other side of the map. This is a game that was recommended to me by several of you guys, so I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down right here on Lightshade. Apparently, this is a very fun match. That being said, right from the get-go, I'm kind of leaning towards Clem. I don't know who ends up winning this, it's just that obviously Clem is Clem, right? When we're discussing who the best Terran player in the world is, most of the time the name Clem comes up, together with probably Maru. But there's no denying that Clem is amongst the very best, and he's been steadily climbing through the ranks. Alright, so it's gonna be a double gas start here for Clem. So he's probably gonna play relatively safely. If he would have gone for a quick command center on the low ground, this could be some trouble. Double barracks here available for Marine Lord. He did also go for double gas of his own. So... It's actually kind of late. What are you doing? Oh, we're lifting the barracks up! To go into the main base right here of Clem. So Lightshade does have a very dark corner. And Terran players do tend to like build their structures together. Okay. They do tend to like build their structures close together. So they uh, can use the add-ons, right? And switch them very easily. Tech Lab being built inside of the main base here. <laughs> okay, Clem. He is sending... Ooh, no. I was gonna say he is sending that Reaper towards the other side of the map because the rally point kind of seemed to go that way. This could actually be a bit of a disaster here for Clem. Um, so Clem is looking for proxies on his side of the map. But um, the proxy is happening inside of his main base. Not something that he's gonna check anytime soon, I don't think. A Marauder is already building. The Concussive Shell's research is also going on inside of that tech lab. For those of you wondering, the Concussive Shells basically makes every single one of those Terran attacks, uh, well, at least from the Marauder, that is, uh, a slow. So, for like, I don't know, a couple of seconds after being shot by one of those Marauders, after this upgrade is done, you're gonna be slowing down for a bit. Clem is playing super defensively, although that being said, I mean, while it was a quick factory, I think he pulled out a gas for a little bit to start up the command center pretty early on. At the very least, he didn't saturate those gases right away. Reactor comes up, Widowmine comes up, Clem is protecting the front. But he's actually being attacked right here from the back. Three Marauders are being saved up. <laughs> okay, there's the factory. There's the reactor as well. So Marine Lord is not going all in. But he's definitely looking to deal... I don't know. Ten workers worth of damage? I don't know how much... You, four? Really? How many are we going to save up? Are you kidding me? So I've seen this before where you either go with double barracks. Or like... Okay, he's going to go right now. Or you like save them up for a little bit. And then uh, go for two of them. Fun fact, while Concussive Shells is researching, you can uh, build exactly two Marauders. Anyways, yeah, those those Reapers are going to have a hard time. Obviously, the SCVs can be pulled as well from the main base. Just to... Oh my god, yeah, create a surround right here on these units. Got to be very careful with the Widow Mine that you don't accidentally kill all of your own stuff. Good control so far here, though, by Clem. Only losing... Well, mm, I said that when he only lost, like, three workers. Hellions, luckily here, do not deal friendly fire. Okay, that Marauder, uh, I mean, if it pops, it's gonna get shot at by a Widowmite right away. Anyways, eight workers here in total. Was that a good start right here for Marine Lord? I mean, obviously his command center is gonna be super late. Clems is already done, so he's gonna be able to start mining with those mules relatively quickly from the net as well. <laughs> I don't think that was necessarily worth it. I mean, I guess now he's got concussive shells done, but... It's gonna make follow-ups a little bit difficult, right? If you now want to go for, say, uh, I don't know, a tech lab at home to start up combat shield and stim pack, I mean, gonna have to, I guess, build a, a tech lab on this on this barracks over here. Yeah, it is gonna be double tech lab eventually. Hmm. All right. Anyways, Clem has built another one of his own tech labs, and actually, that barracks is coming back in for more, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. So, at the very least, it's a nice little follow-up scout. Oh, no, 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 he's gonna try and steal it! He's gonna try and steal it! No, no, no! What? Really? <laughs> Fun fact! 
if you land your barracks on one of your opposing add-ons or your opposing players' add-ons, uh, it does change sites. So technically speaking, both tech labs as well as... Uh, <laughs> he's just taunting his opponent. Probably trying to get a council out of that tech lab. That would be, that would be something. Anyways. Uh, yeah, they do change sites. So they're technically neutral, I suppose. Anyhow. Not something that comes up very often. That being said, I mean, there is a large army here available for Klim. Siege tank here, not really an opportunity to siege up. He's actually going to be forced to lift. Marines will probably have to die. Yeah, he's probably going to save the... Yep, I'm sorry there, Marines. But he's probably going to save the Cyclone as well as that siege tank. Anyways, Clem trying to get some work done on the other side of the map. Eventually, he kills his own tech lab. Or what used to be his own tech lab. And I guess that this barracks... There's probably a pilot inside of that barracks right here, right? Probably sitting there behind the steering wheel or something. Smiling as he goes down with the ship. <laughs> Was that delay really worth it? Right? So, I mean, the tech lab here is a little bit funky because it's technically losses... Wait, does it show two dead tech labs? Oh, I think it does. So one of the tech labs was stolen, and then I guess he killed it? I don't think that counts as two losses. I don't think the units tab is supposed to... Unless he was forced to, like, I don't know, lose another one earlier. Maybe he cancel it or something. Anyways, uh, it slows Clem down a bunch. But... <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's the end of the world. If we would have lost the medevac, that would have actually been a, a problem. He did lose the cyclone on the other side of the map too, I guess, while I was, you know, distracted. Apparently, though, all of the roads do lead to Rome as both players right now are transitioning towards three command centers. Marine Lord has got his a little bit quicker. And we're also now starting off this game with some good old Marines, Siege Tanks, Cyclones, Medivex, and of course, a couple of Ravens. A real quick rundown of Terran versus Terran. Basic units, usually the Marines and the Siege Tanks. If you make too many uh, Marines... Obviously, the siege tanks will absolutely tear them apart. If you make too many siege tanks, however, the marines can go inside of the medivacs and fly, you know, completely around the siege tanks. So that is the bread and butter of this matchup. However, cyclones are very nice as well in the earlier stage of the game. You can use those to gun down the early units. Later on, they really do fall off because they, they don't have a whole lot of health. They need a lot of micro, but they... Uh, yeah, just simply, obviously, later on into the game, you don't really have that amount of control and that amount of micro for each individual unit available anymore. Obviously, when Metavex become important, Vikings are also super helpful. And lastly, we have the Raven here. Ravens are super nice. They have three skills that are very helpful. Interference Matrix that temporarily shuts down one of the opposing siege tanks, for example. That way, they won't be able to fire. Secondly, they have Anti-Armor Missile that makes the units that are affected by it take additional damage. And lastly, it's got a little auto turret as well. Now, once you do get that advantage, right, for the air-to-air -air battle... You can start thinking about transitioning towards, for example, Liberators or maybe even battle cruisers if you're feeling really confident. Um, the problem, though, is that, uh, yeah, you do need to be a little bit later on into the game to pull that off because those units, they are rather expensive. Alrighty, so we do have Clem right here doing Clem things. He's very good at multitasking. Reminds me in a way of, uh, for example, Bjorn, where he's constantly trying to threaten his opponent at the front right here while simultaneously hitting his opponent in two, three, four different angles if he can. At this point in the game, obviously, there's really not that much available. Okay, one of the Ravens there does end up going down. Medivac here will be deflected. Two SCVs go down here in total. That air-to-air -air battle, though. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just trying to run around his opponent. Good defense here so far. Eventually, that Medivac will go down. The Siege Tank helps out, too. And while... Uh, ooh, hello. Eventually, those Marines will all be killed. Marine Lord is defending at the front simultaneously. Defender's advantage in TVT is absolutely massive. Yep. Just because you can siege up your own siege tanks over here makes it very difficult for, opponent to, uh, for the opponent to actually push into this, because obviously you can imagine uh, how do you engage this, right? Like, do you walk up here and then siege up your own tanks? You can't really do it. So even if you have a significant advantage in TVT, it can be extremely difficult. To, uh, it can be extremely difficult to actually close it out. Super easy to accidentally like stim a little bit too aggressively, or drop a little bit too much, or spread your army a little bit too thinly, and then all of a sudden you can once again find yourself behind. A couple of spotter units right now moving around the map. These units are just here to, yeah, see incoming units for the opponent. And that's the same reason why the supply depot is also over here. 
Marine Lord apparently not feeling as uh, as ambitious right here with his own workers and his own Marines. Only sending out a single one of these bad boys So no, no, for now, but... I mean, there's gonna be a missile turret here in the corner. I like this. I guess it's not the corner, but it's, it's definitely on the path, right? If, for example, Clem wants to go for a drop right here instead of the natural expansion, this missile turret is gonna meet that medevac halfway. This is good. Look at that. Clem right here finds... Well, it's a bad boy. He does find his opponent apparently thinking about going for a double drop since it's already been spotted right now, though. Clem is apparently, uh... Yeah, gonna just... Well, send a few units in that direction, but in general, Marine Lord right now is just giving up that position. Plus two, plus two is an advantage here for the red player, so that's quite big. Clem, though, at this point, quite a bit ahead when it comes to the supply count. So 85 army supply versus 69. Pretty nice. Although, obviously, once again, like I said, closing it out is really, really tricky. So despite the, uh, the early game shenanigans, it looks like we're setting ourselves up for a pretty classical macro game. The 4th CC heading on over towards what seems to be the 9 o'clock position. 4th Command Center just finished up as well for Marine Lord, so... Yeah, we're still relatively in sync here with pretty much all of the things that are going on. I always like seeing all of these upgrades together, by the way. That way it's kind of easy to keep track of it. Alrighty. So. Clem has got little hit squads of units moving around the map. Normally, he's the more aggressive player. Whereas Marine Lord likes to, uh, likes to sit back a little bit more. Splits up those Marines as well to finish off the Siege Tank. Even though it may sound a little bit sad, that is a good trait. Five Marines for a Siege Tank, not bad whatsoever. And this Siege Tank over here in a little bit of trouble. The one a little bit, well, closer, I guess, to the Sensor Tower. Also in a bit of trouble. And while apparently Marine Lord was anticipating a fight over at his newly acquired base... Yeah, Clem just hits his opponent right here at the third. Forcing a liftoff. Probably won't be able to get too much more done over here, but at the very least, he's shutting down a bunch of this production. Obviously, when your opponent is creating like a... Like a siege, right? With the siege tanks. Um, you can always go for the counterattack. So that's quite convenient. You can also set up a sandwich if you want to. Marine Lord right here at the very least thinking about it. Moves the Raven in range now too. Okay... Yeah, Clem decides to unseach and get on out of there. It was getting a little bit too hot there. Fair enough. What's the Viking count at? So seven Vikings and one Raven. He's now already making the transition towards three Liberators. Even when you don't necessarily have like an air advantage. I mean, he's got a small air advantage, I suppose. It still takes the opponent a long time to actually clean up those Libs. So Liberators obviously have an ability that allows them to shoot at the ground. Which they, uh, yeah, effectively can siege siege tanks with. There's one as well for Clem. Corvid reactor starts up. Second Corvid reactor. <laughs> so both players are still very in sync. I kind of love it. So even though we are 13 minutes into the game and it's been a very unorthodox start, you can see that both of these guys are very good at what they're looking to do. Three additional command centers come up as well as Marine Lord right now is going up against a maxed out Clem force. The corporate reactor is the energy upgrade, by the way, for the Ravens. Okay. Gotta be careful, though. Alright. If you only siege up, like, three tanks, Marine Lord might be thinking about sacrificing a couple of those units. Well, there's the anti-ground mode. At the same time, Liberator here for Marine Lord, also on the other side of the map, getting a couple of siege tanks. So once again, I think he's gonna force his opponent to back off. Gotta be careful, though. Could be a lot of Marines here. That's why he's scanning. Stimming behind his army to try and catch it. So far, really good game here by Marine Lord, right? Yeah, kind of outpacing uh, Clem here so far. Now, Clem has been out macroing his opponent, but I think that's mostly due to that early game. It's kind of, you know, an advantage that he took at like the five minute mark and he hasn't really let go of it. There's the Fusion Core coming up as well. Fusion Core unlocks a couple of things. First off, the ability to make battle cruisers, which I like. But secondly, also. Ranged upgrades, like for example, those for the Liberator. Liberator ranged, obviously, very, very helpful. Three additional Ravens being produced here. Okay, there's one of the Siege Tanks going down. Clem once again coming back for more. Liberators? Yep, once more Siege up. And while Clem is trying to break through this position over here, he's not really managing to do so. 
And while this is all going on, Marine Lord is taking additional bases, and he's mostly gathering a ton of gas here, too. It's got to really make uh, yeah, the transition towards Mass Raven that we see so very often right now in the late game of TVT. It's got to make that transition so much easier. Okay, so Clem already setting himself up for uh, a bunch of missile turrets over here, too. So in, like, the ultimate late game of TVT, it seems that Marines are just no longer used. So early on, it's all about the Marine. Every single army is based around the Marine. But at some point, you might want to transition from Marines entirely. So it's like it's like you start off playing Bioterran, and then you transition to watch full mech eventually. Which I've always been a big fan of. I think it's really badass. And then eventually, in like the ultimate, ultimate late game, we see Battle Cruisers mixed in as well. But Battle Cruisers, they're super expensive. Usually not very cost efficient at all. Plus, they take forever to produce. Yeah, Ravens and Siege Tanks and, you know... Liberators, Vikings, those sorts of units are just less of a commitment. But, I mean, it's not uncommon to see battlecruisers. It's just kind of hard to actually get them out. Alright. So players are going around each other here for the most part. Trying to outsmart each other constantly. Three additional starports here added into the mix. Um... My god, there's a lot of structures always when you see TVT, man, yeah. So already there are six starports available here for Klim. Whereas Marine Lord is only just now making that transition. Yeah, we see very similar setups for the both of them. Just slightly different approaches in getting there. Okay, a couple of Marines here up north. A few siege tanks killed down south. Ooh, Clem will once again be shut down with those tanks temporarily. So that's the interference uh, matrix. Eventually, though, that will wear off. And these siege tanks are going to be able to continue firing here at that orbital command. Okay, at the same time, Clem going for a drop as well, knowing very well that his opponent does have more Vikings there, so he's trying to see if the Vikings are going to be baited into the main base instead. The main base, it's kind of like the soft underbelly of the Terran. Losing those production structures really, really sucks. It's probably not going to get too much done here, but look at the amount of Marines that are forced back into the main base right now. Ooh, Medifex though, very low on health, and that is 20 supply down the drain. Apparently, we haven't arrived at that point yet where you do transition towards, like, full mech. Because he is adding on more Marines. There's the uh, advanced ballistics. That's the ranged upgrade for the Liberators coming up. There is a planetary here, but planetaries don't have that much ranged. So, these Marines here can shut down at the very least a little bit of that mining. Marine Lord, once again, re-securing the gas. He ended up losing, I don't know, 20-something SCVs there, I think, in total. Not the end of the world, though, because obviously at this stage in the game... We have this many uh, command centers. You can morph a couple of them into orbital commands and start mining with mules instead. Marine Lord, though, kind of broke. Clem has got a 30 worker lead and a large bank already. Plus, obviously, he's been in the driver's seat of this game ever since, well, past the early game. It's very difficult not to die here. With this amount of siege tanks going around, I mean, Clem could just march up here and then, like, fire once. And the Planetary Fortress that is probably going to be here. Well, okay, it's not even going to be the case. He's just evacuating it in advance. Uh, but it would just be gunned down. Anyways, here once again is that air army moving forward. The little auto turrets dropped on the ground as well, forcing those Vikings from Marine Lord to back off. But Marine Lord keeps the command center alive for a little while longer. Clem has not taken this base of his own yet. Little Medivac dropped now finally for Marine Lord as well, trying to do some, some counter-attack damage. Okay, sensor tower is always annoying to lose as well. This is going to be a little bit more difficult here for Clem to uh, get value in. And Clem actually, ooh, sending an SCV train around. I mean, obviously these guys are busy microing multiple angles at once. You can look at the average actions per minute here throughout this game so far. Both players are hitting apparently on average about 8 buttons a second. I think, what is, is, is that 8 buttons a second? Something like that. I, I'm not going to do... Don't do math! Never do math in a video! But they're fast. They're going clickety-clickety is what they're doing, okay? Once again, every single time Marine Lord wants to acquire a new base, Clem is there. Well, except for the one apparently at the 6 o'clock position. Little auto turrets, though, are getting rid. Ugh. Or at the very least, helping the Vikings right here get rid of that command center. How many Liberators are we on? Five. Okay, it's only five. It looked to me like it was more, but... Okay, so Clem definitely with a firm advantage at this point in the game. That being said, I do like this unit composition for Marine Lord a little bit better. Ah, eh, Clem does have 12 ravens. <laughs> He's got so many ravens, oh my god. 
I like his unit composition, but I didn't realize there were that many ravens out. Slow pushing with the libs is always nice. At the same time, once again, down south. Marines trying to outrange. Ugh, the planetary fortress don't do it. Anyways, both of these players are obviously paying most of their attention right here up north. A lot of units covered right there in the orange paint. That's the anti-armor missile I was talking about earlier. Marine Lord trying to create like a choke on that base, I guess, at the 12 o'clock position. And so far, it's kind of working. Yeah, if you have Liberation Zones set up all over this section of the map, it's going to be very difficult for Clem to actually break through that. Clem apparently now seemingly giving up that position entirely? At least he was thinking about it. Now, comes back home. Little bit of indecisiveness, or maybe he was trying to trick his opponent there. Yeah, the scan right now reveals exactly where the opponent is located as well. So, one of the advantages of having, obviously, this many orbital commands later on is not only can you get rid of your SCVs, you can also scan constantly, so it's easy to keep track of where your opponent's army is located. Anyways, Marine Lord right now spots as well with the center tower exactly where that blue force is at. Didn't continue onwards up north, instead brought his units back home. I feel like he maybe could have been able... Hmm. Maybe he could have killed that base, but I guess it would have come at the expense of his own planetary fortress. Bunch of SCVs end up going down here. May have been the one right there on the bottom left. Siege tanks though for Clem are sieging up once again and they're backing off. A couple of auto turrets get dropped right here on top of, well, everything. Eventually the tanks there will go down and now it's auto turrets fighting auto turrets. Terran versus Terran is such a complex matchup, man. It really is like chess. I know Marine Lord has made some comments about that recently. <laughs> Where Protoss has got the easier tools, and I believe Terran versus Zerk was dumb as well. But Terran versus Terran, that's 4D chess. <laughs> I love the memes, it's so funny. Well, yeah, for uh, whenever you get the chance to ask any pro gamers about, you know, the OP race. They will pretty much always say the other two races, right? The grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> Terran players will complain that Zerk and Protoss are OP, and Protoss will say that Zerk and Terran are OP, and guess what Zerk get? Uh, what Zerk players say? They'll definitely tell you that... Uh, yeah, Terran and, and Protoss. Kind of broken, man. Anyways. I'm not gonna lie, though. I do agree with that Marine Lord... Uh, well, I do uh, agree with Marine Lord that Terran versus Terran is an extremely complex matchup. It is like real-time chess, you know, it's like real-time chess with a fog of war. <laughs> you gotta be so fast. Anyway, so look at that, right? Ooh, was Clem actually not at 3-3 upgrades this whole time? Wow, okay, huge misplay there. Didn't quite catch that. I assumed that he was actually at 3-3 already as well. He had the resources for it, so maybe he just accidentally forgot. Either way, we do now have a 3-3 transition here for uh, Marine Lord. For the mech units. Well, at least the flying mech units, that is. Oh my god, that was a lot of marines going down. Siege tanks right there shooting over the debris, trying to get maximum value in. Anti armor missile once again coming up as well. That being said, Clem does still have a bunch of his own marines here, and I think he is going to be able to zone away this 12 o'clock base, but that was a, a very expensive set of units to lose. Ugh. Yeah, so in these Marine vs. Marine battles, well, I guess there's a lot of siege tanks too, but in these Marine vs. Marine battles, those upgrades are absolutely massive. Glam ends up killing one of the bases there of the opponent, but it did come at a very significant cost. Plus, I feel like he could have had this base for quite some time. I mean, I guess there weren't that many SCVs available to mine those minerals anyway, but... Like I said, Clem has been in the driver's seat here for some time. For some time being like the last, I don't know, 18 minutes or so? I feel like there was a chance for him to have this base acquired a little while ago already. Okay. So now the banks are, yeah, depleted. Neither player is maxed out anymore either. This, this is, that's a lot of upgrades, man. He's already at plus two as well for his siege tanks. They don't mess around anymore. There's so many Vikings here, right? So 22 Vikings versus nine. Yeah, Clem right now decides to land his Vikings as well. He was going very heavy into the, into the Raven. How many Ravens have gone down at this point? 17 versus 28? You kidding me? Anyways, Bio Army here, together with a couple of Ravens, moving across the map. Ravens are 200 gas each, by the way. They're super expensive. One Siege Tank right there, trying to shoot at maximum range. With the vision that those Vikings provide for him. Alright. Yeah, it's, I guess the main thing you spent your gas on, right, in this matchup. 
I mean, siege tanks and uh, medivacs and vikings and all that are pretty gas heavy, but not nearly as badly as those uh, those ravens. I remember once upon a time, man, people used to flood a lot of gas in this matchup, and they they weren't sure what to spend it on. <laughs> Darren's tend to play ooh, relatively mineral heavy armies, especially when playing bio. But all right, Clem going around the back right now. Ooh, can he actually catch some of those units? Nope, he will not. Uh, that being said, I mean, there are still some siege tanks as well that were... Oh, this is a good fight. I think all things considered here for Clem, although there's a lot of Marines going down as well. Anyways, Marine Lord right now baiting those blue units into the direction of the siege tanks that were trying to break that 12 o'clock position here of Clem. Eventually, the siege tanks here will be killed, but that was a tremendous amount of damage that Clem just took. Yeah, if you look at the resources lost, it's not even remotely close. It's like a Terran versus Protoss. Or a Terran versus Zerk. Or Zerk versus Protoss, I guess. Anyways, significantly more losses here for Klim. And while he has been outmining his opponent for the majority of the game, right now I don't really know exactly if he can still say that. Considering Marine Lord hung on. Hung on? Hanged on? Considering he hang on? There you go. <laughs> he, uh... Yeah, he didn't die to, like, the insane amount of pressure that Klim put his opponent under right now. He's actually getting a small little lead. He's got himself a lot of bases. He's got that air domination as well, which is huge. Klemdo apparently thinking about just fighting without that army. Okay, nicely done. Grabs a couple of his opponent's siege tanks as well with the interference matrix. Klem is obviously now mining this expansion down south. Apparently one liberator was trying to prevent that for at least a little bit. And while Marine Lord is transitioning towards a lot of mechanical units, those mechanical units are a hell of a lot slower than just the good old bio siege tank. So constantly you have to decide what units do you want to build. Clem actually now finding a couple of Ravens as well that are just rallied to their deaths. Even though Clem was very far ahead earlier, right now, I mean, Marine Lord kind of came back, but uh, I'm wondering if if Clem is actually breaking through this once more. He's gonna move those Siege Tanks though. That is so many Liberators. Okay, bunch of Siege Tanks die in a heartbeat. Maybe top, uh, yeah, top this off with a couple of those auto turrets as well. Finish off those Siege Tanks, not bad whatsoever. The auto turrets obviously are just a little bit of energy spent. Reinforcing units up north as well. Clem right now, okay. Once again, kills a whole bunch of his opponent's stuff. He does lose the entire army over here though, so that's once again a ton of very expensive units down the drain. He's playing like he's a billionaire, but it turns out he's only like, you know, a poor StarCraft millionaire, right? So, okay, probably not a millionaire, but 100,000 there. <laughs> he doesn't have that much money here. And he's not really mining that much either, although he is currently, as you can see on the income graph, there you go, on the income tab, rather. You can see exactly how much income he is getting per minute. He is definitely out mining Marine Lord because of the expansion that he just killed over here. That being said, it's 137 army supply here for Marine Lord versus 67, or no, 89, sorry, for Clem. Those numbers are obviously always fluctuating, uh, fluctuating so Clem, I don't think you want to be here. I think the counterattack is what you want to do, man. Unless you can grab your opponent's flying units all for free, but... Alright, might be time to give up the 12 o'clock position and go for the counter. Nah, he doesn't really want to do it. He does still have a lot of ravens, though. There's still 10 ravens here with a lot of energy. If you shut down all of those siege tanks, I guess the bio units can clean up the rest? Yeah, that's exactly what he's trying to do right now as well. Dropping a bunch of those auto turrets to the ground. Few siege tanks here from Marine Lord all the way in the back, so Clem seems to be breaking through this position once again. All of the siege tank in red end up going down. He's got to be careful, though. Those siege tanks, he got to stim again. All right, he decides to stim again to finish the job, but that was a lot more Marines going down. All right. So he actually doesn't need to give up the 12 o'clock base, and he does keep that Orbital Command alive. Huge amount of losses on the side of Marine Lord primarily. Yeah, that's where those ravens really shine, right? So, only a single viking available here for Clem. He's lost that air domination quite some time ago. Well, if he even ever, if he even ever had it in this game, I'm not even sure. Okay. <laughs> Marine Lord's still maxed out. He's actually still got a very respectable bank as well. Clem, I mean, kind of broke. Now that this base is once again running, Marine Lord is going to be able to, uh, yeah, even up that income quite nicely as well. Clem obviously did take this expansion really early on. The same can be said actually for Marine Lord. So the fifth, uh, the fifth base, I guess, is what it was for the both of them, is now running dangerously low on money. 
Marine Lord does still have a fresh expansion, though, all the way at the 6 o'clock base. That's really where that cost efficiency of his comes into play, right? Because Clem, I mean, he's got some money over here, but that is soon going to run out as well over the course of, like, the next five minutes or so. Anyways, Marine Lord wants to continue trading armies. If he trades evenly right now, I think he should come out of this ahead, just because he's got more fresh minerals on his side of the map. I mean, I always talk about sides of the map. Obviously, you can take whichever expansion you want. It's just that your opponent is probably uh, not going to agree with you if you decide to take what is on, you know, quote-unquote, their side of the map. All right. So once again, I love these little moves here from Clem. Uh, this time around, it's a planetary fortress. Yeah, with repair, I don't think he can go through that with that amount of marines. Anyways, he was thinking about going for a fight. If that would have been an orbital, I think that was like 20 SCVs down the drain. Instead, right now, it's going to be an orbital comment for this little, uh, little skirmish. <laughs> Liberator here thinks it's a Valkyrie. Splitting here by Clem as well to try and negate some of that splash damage. Eventually, the lip does go down. Okay, I think that this planetary fortress also is not gonna live to tell the tale, which is, I guess, fine. Although, don't lose all of the marines, Clem. Clem, if you lose all of those marines stuck in the corner, I don't think that's what you want. He's actually kind of stuck right now, and a lot of those marines will end up going down. A few of them do get evacuated, I was gonna say. Uh, an empty 12 o'clock base for, like, a full 6 o'clock base seems like a good trait, unless you lose, like, I don't know, 20 marines in the process, too. <sighs> okay. Marine Lord's bank is insane, though. Still 4,000 resources available. And even with the most cost-efficient trades, I don't really know exactly how Clem could clean up that, you know, amount of... of uh, maybe if he can get on top of the production or something, or like... You need to keep threatening as well, right? Because as soon as you leave that pressure, your opponent is going to retake all of the expansions you just killed. It's going to instantly remake those... Uh, yeah, those locations there. Okay. So Clem is actually now regrouping with his army. He's got 80 marines versus 50. That is a lot. There's not that many. Uh, there's nine siege tanks here for Marine Lord. I'm not sure. Okay, Interference Matrix once again shutting down a couple of the siege tanks up north. You can't really go up that ramp though as Clem. So since the rocks are still up, he loses a bunch of the units here as they are disconnected from the rest of the army. That being said, there are so many marines here for the, well, I guess the blue Terran player. I was going to say the French Terran player, but that doesn't really specify anything. So many auto turrets are dropped to the ground as well, but Clem loses this battle. He knows very well that his opponent has been trading far more efficiently this game than he has. And because of that, Marine Lord is the one that obtains the victory. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, hit subscribe so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.